This podcast is brought to you by Fiber One Bar. Mm. No, it's not. <laughs> we tried, but they right. said no. I think someone liked a photo on Instagram. Yeah. Global Nation. Thanks, Global Nation. Your support helps us. Hey guys, this is Tom Leo. And I'm Zach. And welcome to another episode of This Is Our Common Discussion. I almost forgot what our name was. <laughs> so, today's topic... Excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. We are going to be talking about marriage gender equality. You can marry someone of the same gender and it's perfectly fine. All over the United States. So All over the United States, yeah. yeah. Our second podcast, and we're already going. We're already gonna gonna talk about some heavy stuff. This is in the U.S. Yes, I know. Yeah, I didn't know much about the detail. I just know somewhere in the world there's it's perfect equality. I didn't know it was actually in the United States. From the East Coast to the West Coast, all the whole United States of America. Wow. Yeah. Was there just this one state in the country that just decided to legalize it, and then it was all completed? Like. Or did they, or did all the states um, do it at the same time? I want to. I details. think the government just like, like screw it. We're gonna like just let it happen all over, so everyone has the equal, you know, rights in them. You know, they won't get married. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and when that happened, my Twitter feed just blew up. Yeah, a lot of people were mad. A lot of people were happy. It was, it's, uh, it's the middle right now. It's tied. But yeah, my Twitter feed blew up like crazy with everybody saying like. Well, it's mostly positive comments because, you know, people are retweeting positive comments because they don't want to retweet any of the negative stuff. And when I heard about it, it's like, eh, okay, that's that's cool, I guess. And, but here's the thing. My thought about this thing, about gender marriage equality, it's, it's great. I mean, I think it's, it's good that people can, can uh, marry can marry whoever they want now at this point. It doesn't have to be specific to one gender anymore. Yeah, I agree. If they, if they want to, you know, why not, right? And, hey, and yeah, I got nothing against nothing against, against <laughs> uh, lesbians or gay men. And hey, that it's perfectly fine here on our podcast, so go for it. Why, why don't you take over? Say, say your thoughts about what you thought of this. Well, I, like I said, you know, if they want to, like, shouldn't be against that. It's their choice. It's their freedom. Like, why should you stop it? For, for it's kind of... Be? It's just kind of out of the ordinary. Like, for... Well, growing well, up, we've always been told that men and women get married yeah. and not the other way around. But as yeah. you get older, you learn that there's a different side to, whole, to the whole marriage thing. And people think that... Or it's wrong to marry someone of the same uh, gender because it's out of social customs. Yeah. It's a taboo if you if you will. Yeah. But yeah, I just this kind of thing, as really heavy as it was, and I want to be able to tell people, hey, I support this all the way. So do I. I I just don't really I don't exactly care about this kind of thing because it's just a really it's just something that people are I mean it's good, don't get me wrong. I just find people Negative people that overreact about this kind of thing, saying it's the worst thing that could ever happen. It's it's not. It's not. It's not bad. It's just it's different. It's trying. It's trying to give people the opportunity to express what um, to express their feelings to anyone they want, uh, female, male, whatever gender they so please. Yeah. Well, I remember in the past before you know all this happened, like. There'd be a whole bunch of people, you know, like gay and lesbian, like they're standing in front of the courthouse in different cities in the United States or Canada mm -hmm. too, and they want to get the, get the past and let gay marriage happen. So yeah. It was harder back then, but now, today, you know, things are changing. Yeah. People, let's face it, everyone, we're we're living in an age where where people are more freely express expressive about who they love. Um, like, if I'm... If a man wants to marry a man because he loves the man so much, that's the guy's choice. That's yes. it's not our place to be so judgmental. Yeah, like it's their choice. They love you. They want you. Yeah. Cause no one wants to like take someone's rights away. Just, just yeah. <laughs> I remember actually 
my sister showed me this video, uh, which was made by College Humor. My sister watched a few College Humor videos where where uh, gay people were saying. <laughs> How did that video go? I'm trying to remember. I don't know. Yeah. Do you know what happened? There? There was a video where um, uh, gay men were saying that they would be the perfect boyfriends for for their girlfriends, and they're explaining the reasons why. And it was it was hilarious. I thought it was funny, but at the same time, it sent a powerful message. I felt it's one of those things where it's like it's a, it has a funny tone, but. It sends a message to you that we can all understand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. A banana phone. This is yeah. not the studio that we've been wanting to... Are you seriously... What are you... Oh, I got a banana! Okay. <laughs> we, just, we just got banana thrown. Oh, we got a phone hey. call. Hey, right. how's it going? <laughs> this is our studio. This is this is the studio that we've um, had to resort to doing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> do you want this? I don't want it. Uh, I'm still leaving this up now. Maybe I'll have it later. Okay. So yeah, like I don't know. Like, when you first thought about the idea of gender same um, marriage, like the first time you ever heard it as a kid, did you ever? Find it awkward or yeah, anything? Yeah, I was just thinking, like, what? It I thought sense. it, like, yeah, I always thought it was awkward too because it's because growing up, we've always thought that uh, men and women were the were the people that were supposed to get together. That's just what's been ingrained into our into our so brains growing up. Natural way. Uh, we yeah, know. that's that's what society tells us. But this idea happens. It's it starts off kind of awkward, but. Once you get down to like how the whole thing operates and how and why this this thing happens, you start to realize that there's a bigger story behind all this that people people hide behind this social um social what? Sorry, did you? <laughs> We're trying to have a serious conversation. A lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. All you right. guys are gonna be able to see it, but there's there's people behind the camera that are doing stuff, and it's kind of distracting. But yeah. But yeah, at first, it starts off becoming really awkward. It was awkward for me because I was like, really? Really? That can happen? We need to understand it first, you know? It yeah. Was like... Yeah, and you know what they say, knowledge is power. Exactly. And yes. knowledge gives you... Knowledge gives you the power to understand people, feelings, and... And uh, give you a better idea of what the world is about, and that's and that's really what's uh, what I find to be the most important, and why I'm obsessed. I'm kind of obsessed with learning as much as I can, and not just with what I'm interested in, but I want to know everything I can, like about the world and stuff like that, so I can understand how people operate and how the world operates, so yeah. that so that if one day people ask me. Hey, do you think this is a good idea? Do you think this world thing is the right thing to do? I will have a better understanding of the whole thing and and be able to make the the right choice to say either yeah, it it is the right thing to do because of this or no, it's not a good thing because of this. You know what I'm saying, right? Yes. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is key. You ever you ever seen the YouTuber uh, Jacksepticeye? No, I did not. He's a he's an Irish gamer. I recently I Irish started watching. Well, I watched his. I've been watching his videos for a long time, and I really like his stuff. One of his catchphrases is "Speed is key," literally in that voice. In this case, knowledge is key. That wouldn't turn your speakers up pretty loud, too. <laughs> yeah, he, he is a pretty loud guy, and he admits that. Why do you think, like, other than what we've gone through, why do you think people are so negative about the whole uh, gender marriage idea? Well, they're just set on, you know, the natural, like, idea of men getting yeah, married. They're just staying in the past, and, you know, and people change in the future, like I talked in the previous yeah. podcast. Yeah, we're living, we're living in an age where 
people are more expressive about their feelings. I know I said that already, but it's so it's, true. It's obviously it. It's a bridge. People are on this side, people are on that side. No one wants to cross over. Some people want to cross over. And you know what? Just, just people, up. our world is constantly changing. and It's never going to stay the same. There's always going to be this or that. You know, black yeah. or white. Or, Sometimes you know. it'll be changed for the good. Sometimes it'll be changed for the bad. But yeah. When it does come for the change for the bad, I think we'll be able to have the knowledge to know that it was a mistake and, and fix it along the way. Because I think we're pretty... Our society, as as ridiculous and, um, and uh, stupid as we can be sometimes, we have gained a lot of knowledge over the years. Like, if you were to tell people from 1950 about all the accomplishments and all the knowledge that we've gained in um, in our time, you'd think they'd probably say something like, "What? Yeah. How? We all confused, ask many questions to be lost. They don't know why. Like, like, doesn't make sense. Explain." But that's what makes evolution in our case so um, so interesting. Every new piece of knowledge that we learn is another step forward to our own evolution. Yeah. No. Let's talk about evolution, actually, or like the progress of um, of our human evolution, actually, because I think that's really all we can really say about it, about um, about uh, gender neutral marriage, gay marriage, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we we completely support it. We think we think it's a great it's a great thing. It's a great um, it's a great way for people to express it, but. The, the truth of it all, that people having a knee-jerk reaction to something that's out of our social norm, it's just the alarming thing about our society that there are people that just don't want to, don't want to see this, this change in their lives. Maybe, maybe it's because you're scared, maybe it's because it's a... It's a new thing that you can't quite accept into into your life. Like it's yeah. something you don't. It's not something you were taught. It's not something you you knew to be true. So maybe you're just a little scared of it. And yeah, that makes sense. I'm not mad at you guys. I'm just saying we're all scared. change. Yeah, exactly. We're all scared. Change is going to happen whether we like it or not. And like I said, either, whether good or bad. Change is going to happen. It's going to be a constant thing. Mm -hmm. Always going to change. And speaking of change, going back to our evolutionary um, topic, yeah, we we jump from uh, gay marriage to evolution. Back to gay marriage. That's what great. That's what's great about these podcasts. Yeah. How do you think we've come as a, as a society today? Uh, well, you know. Looking at Elvish, uh, sorry, evolution. Like evolution, sorry, evolution. Evolution. Were you saying? I thought you were gonna say Elvish or something. No, sorry. <laughs> well, it's just it's just amazing though, like how much stuff's changed over the years. You know, we go back from uh, yeah. start times and for all the time, all, all the times from so now, and all, yeah, everything being built. And, you know, we've even built. learned. There's even stuff that we've learned in the past. Like we're talking like dinosaur age stuff in the past. Like we've uncovered fossils about. To show that these animals actually, at one point, existed in their lives. And actually, where we live in Alberta, like there's lots of dinosaur fossils. We have the most dinosaur fossils in the world here in Alberta. Yeah. yeah like Drum Heller. You know, far away that was. Yeah. Hey, if any of you follow me on Instagram, um, a year ago I think it was actually, I oh, went. Well. I went to Drum Heller. Uh, to see the museum and um, and checked out all these fossils and uh, and yeah we had a, there was a lot of different fossils that I really liked and um, but just the idea that in our day and age we're able to take the time to actually discover new things about our world whether whether it's an advancement in technology or something in the past like a dinosaur fossil, we're able to find it with our knowledge of what, to, what this stuff is about. And, 
And hey, there's actually been talk about uh, dinosaur tissues, blood vessels, inside the dinosaur bones. Hmm. Oh, so know. essentially, if we continue in, um, in technological progress, we might be able to make hybrid dinosaurs. Jurassic it's Jurassic Park <laughs> all over but, again. But here's the thing though, every Jurassic Park oh, is a magical dinosaur, all of a sudden it eats humans and it starts well, attacking. I think, <laughs> I think we could be... I think because of these um, movies, we're smart enough to know not to make to make dangerous killing machines. Yeah. At least without some kind of safety measure. I think we're, we're smart enough for that kind of thing. We, yeah. We're never gonna let... We're never gonna let this kind of thing happen. We're never gonna. I don't think we'll ever. I don't think we'll ever let like a dinosaur. A dinosaur. Um, I wouldn't want to say an uprising because that's not what it really is. A dinosaur rampage that. A dinosaur outbreak. That's what I'm looking for. We. I think we're smart enough to contain a dinosaur outbreak or um, or to stop or to prevent a. Uh, a machine uprising. Yeah. I'm not so sure about alien invasion, though. That's be, a topic for another day. It'd be cool, though, you know, like down the road, many years in the future, you set up a car, you get on top of a T Rex and just ride to work or whatever, yeah. you know? <laughs> T Rex parking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting to to see how much how much knowledge that we've gained. In fact, I'm all I'm learning lots of new stuff all the time. There's a there's a YouTube channel. I think it's a YouTube channel. I've seen it in ads on YouTube. There's this show sponsored by Toy to Toyota. That's not what it's called. <laughs> Toyota called Thinking It Forward, where a guy is talking this one guy is talking about the different ideas of technological advancement. This person, the last one I saw was about how they this person has created um meats like hamburger meat and stuff from just cow tissue wow. you can still get uh that that meaty taste that everyone likes but you don't have to harm the cows I and i think it's That's a smart. it's really i think it's a really good idea because unlike um uh i don't know what's a good example the thing is, with, with DNA, the tissue, DNA is something that will never become obsolete. It's something that's going to be available to us all the time, and just the idea that they're able to make um, a perfectly accurate burger, um, or, or any kind of meat really, without killing the actual animal, I think that's a real step in progress. Yes. The trick right now, though, from what I understand, is that it's expensive. Yeah, see, the thing is, though, you can save, you can help save the planet, but it's gonna cost you a little bit. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like planet Earth is its own business. Man. Exactly. Like, yes. Hey, listen, I'm. I think it's great that you're trying to make um, make things better for the Earth, but let's talk business. It's like something on this Earth is making a cool joke to make things things better, but. I think at some point, like, when we're able to reduce the, um, if we can reduce the cost somehow, like, I don't know, the, our governments are a little weird like that when it comes to, like, uh, you know, taxes and, like, you know that an American dollar and a Canadian dollar, one's worth more than another? Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's, just... it's constantly changing all the time. It's like, will you make up your mind at how much value it is? I know. Like, it's annoying. Like, all of a sudden, like, for one week, the dollar will be okay, and then after next week, it'll just plummet down to here, and then it'll keep switching like this, you know? It's yeah. Never, it's never this. It's always that, that, or that, you know? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's constantly moving, and I don't like that, because if... If we can't decide how much um, how much all this is worth, like how much all this progress is going in, we're constantly going to be having these these, these struggles into. I'm just into worried progress. for our future, man. If nothing changes, I'm just gonna be worried. Well, like we said, change is going to happen. Like yeah. there could be change tomorrow. Well, there could be change yeah. fifty years from now. But, like for, for change for the economy, wise, not just in general. Okay, yeah, because economy, you never know. 
takes a while to come back. It takes it to go down any second, you know? It's like stock market. You go to, you go to New York, if you go look at the stock market, it's like, it just changes every second. There's people trying to sell stuff, and then all of a sudden they lose money, and they win money. And just, yeah. You know? Yeah, I understand that. But I, I don't want to get into that. It's too much. Not, not another day or whatever. Topics for another day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think... This this show in particular, uh, thinking and forward, is what it's called. Is that what, yeah, I think that's what it's called. Like the different, the different um, ideas and advancements that are go that could go into our future, like to give us an idea of what we could be experiencing in the near future. Yeah, I think this is a really this is a really great accomplishment and a prime example of. Human, human progress. Yeah, I can hurt an animal. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. And you know, progress, like, and progress can come from many different forms, like, like uh, perfect equality and in, um, in uh, genders and yes. in, and in our technology and in animal rights. Like, I think we, as much a, as ridiculous as some people can be with how they set their standards in essence we are making essential progress in this in this world yeah i'm just hoping that we can we'll live long enough to see an age where we have progressed far enough that our society can colonate out out to other planets because i am a man who likes i like space you could call me the Space Corps if you want. Space. I bet you probably Peter's gonna watch this, the organization. Yeah. They're gonna say, oh, these guys are really smart and talking about animals and protecting them. Yeah. Well, just like specific, just the specific kind of um, technology that can save animals. Yeah. We're not talking yeah, about we're not, like we're complete yeah, yeah, animals. We'll so that's gonna that be now. another topic <laughs> for another day. Yeah. But yeah, just from um, I'm a man. I'm a man who really likes space. I like the idea of space travel and being able to branch out to different um, to different planets. What about Interstellar? Remember that movie? Yeah, I love that yeah. movie. Not a lot of people really like that movie. Yeah, what it was, it was a dialogue. People thought it was cheesy, so people didn't think it was cheesy. It depends. Well, space is the space was perfect. I love to see it. Yeah, I, I, and I, the idea of um, of like time warps and whatever, it was really... Oh, I thought it was really good. Chris, Chris Nolan, one of my favorite. I want to well, really, it. yeah, it's, that's fine. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> favorite. My favorite. It's my favorite director. Um, he created. Um, he's created the Dark Knight trilogy. He created Inception, Interstellar. Was it Man of Steel? Yeah. He, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Oh wait. Yeah, Chris Nolan, I think he directed Man of Steel. Was he directing it or did he produce it? I don't know. I thought he produced it. I don't know, it's one or the other. But yeah. And and actually, you know, I did some research. There's an editor who was on uh, Christopher Nolan's team creating the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, Lee Smith is who he's called. He's the he's the main editor for the Dark Knight trilogy. He edited those entire films, and I was like, "Wow, this guy did some really good work." That's the kind of editor I want to aspire to be. He's done. He's. I actually looked him up and seen the different kinds of videos he's edited over his life, and he's done some really good ones. He's he's edited uh, RoboCop, um, the the Dark Knight trilogy, like I said, um, Inception, like I said, and and Interstellar. He even uh, edited X Men First Class. Dude, Lee Smith, good on you, man. As you're, you're really good at this. You're the kind of editor I want to aspire to be. Can you imagine just sitting there on the computer, like all of these clips, just like a year worth of films? Like, yeah, okay, over here. It over takes here. a lot of patience to to be uh, editing a video, especially a Hollywood film, like, bro. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but. The thing that I like about being an editor is that I'm able to to take a clip, mix it around a little bit, and put some special effects in it, and it would look amazing. That's the kind of um, because yeah, it does take a lot of patience. Like some people just don't have the patience to do that kind of thing, and 
in a sense, I don't really have that much patience, but I have, but I'm under the mentality that if I can do this, what happens if I do this? I am in this creative uh, idea that I that uh, I can mix things up a little bit and make these awesome videos. Yeah. And I think there's there's some really good videos that we've made throughout uh, our lives, like um, our teleporter. Was it three thousand or five thousand? <laughs> our tele our teleporter video. It was an infomercial of this fake teleporting product that we came up with. Try to ever Tim. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> How's Tim doing, by the way? I have to talk to him forever, dude. I don't know. But we made that video, and I did these editing different these different editing effects, and I'm like, yeah, I think I did really good. It was one of our it was one of our most um, popular videos on Ultimate Comedy Club, wasn't it? That was pretty popular. It was that, and Itch Nib in the Wild was oh, yeah. our popular. Do your Australian accent. It's <laughs> amazing. It's a common Itch Nib, <laughs> a weird species of cake of. A jackal canines. I forgot the lines already. So, and that was actually a video that was all improv. We had no script for that whatsoever. That was all improv, and I'm really impressed with how it turned out. I know, like wow. The one thing, and this was kind of, this was kind of months down the road after we released the video. I thought to myself, it would have been funnier if we had. You in this in the um, in a sort of Australian suit, but saying like the outro and saying like how I'm being mauled and all that, yeah. and you know making a little quirk in the in the video. But other than that, I'm really I'm really proud of how we um, how we made that video. There's a lot of different videos that we've made that um, that I think we did really well on, and I hope you guys. Um, check out those videos because we put we when we make these diff these kinds of videos, we put as much time and effort as we can into making this stuff. But it always helps when other people see it so that we know that we're doing a good job and that people like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Like it's just been quite a journey. I'm, I'm glad. I, I can't wait to make more more films with you and the guys. You know, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Uh, how did we get? How did we get here? <laughs> in conversation, we went. We've been a little uh, spastic all over the place. It's kind of like a loopy loop. Go up and then back to back. Uh, I wouldn't say it was like a loopy loop. Wow. Well, <laughs> what um? We were talking about evolution, and then um, then we were talking about the technological movies. Then we were talking about movies, and then art films. Yeah. That's where our conversation went. <laughs> Man, sometimes the conversation that um, that people can get in, even in a general discussion, it can get a little. Uh, it can get all over the place. Yeah. It's crazy though. Like when you start talking about something, and all of a sudden, oh wait, no, like this, and then oh yeah, you're over there, and you're missing the middle. You just keep going, do your thing, and get back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's. That makes sense. Yeah. But it's interesting though, you know, we're talking about this and you guys are like, well, like, when you watch it, of course, you'd be like, wow, you know, there's always something to talk about. Like, yeah, absolutely. Ne never a dull moment. There it is, I'm trying to say. There you go. That's a good point. What do you want to talk about now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, this is one of those things where it's like, we pick these like short topics and then it's, and then we gotta think of something else. Like, Let's think back to like let's think back to like our evolution uh, topic if we haven't right, we'll gone back. through that. How do you think our evolution as humans? Where do you think we'll get to in uh, in like fifty years from now? Well, the way we're going now, you know, things are changing so fast. And people are getting smarter, and eventually, you know, I'm hoping like. We just we're still on this planet. Nothing. We don't destroy anything, you know. Because I mean, as yeah. humans, we do things, but sometimes we do bad things. We don't know how to fix it. Yeah. We do. We can. 
We we do stupid things. We make mistakes. Don't. But you learn from your mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Learn. Don't lie, to people, and say that you've never made a mistake yeah, in no your lie. life. No, lying's bad. No, <laughs> you've definitely made a mistake in your life. That doesn't care how big or how small you've made in your life. You've made a mistake sometime in your life. The best thing you can do is to is to learn from those mistakes and and yeah. Cause you ever heard the the saying, "Those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it." I haven't heard that, but this sounds good. It yeah, basically what it means like you f if you forget what led you to that miserable point in your life, you're gonna go right back to it because you forget how it all happened. Mm. So basically, Americans, if you forget how you won the Revolutionary War, Britain's gonna invade you. <laughs> That's a terrible example, actually. <laughs> But I want to be alive on the day where we where we make first alien contact because I think that's going to be one of the biggest moments in uh, in human history when we get to history. Like either like either an alien, one alien, or I don't know, multiple aliens. It could be multiple aliens that come to Earth, or maybe they're already on Earth. We don't know. Well, there's been stories of people getting abducted and all that alien. Yeah, the X Files TV show too. Some of the stuff yeah, but they've been saying. Yeah, but the problem with that well, we and the stuff that true. I don't. Yeah, the, the uh, thing is that kind of stuff, as interesting as it is, I don't really believe to be true because you know how a rumor gets like passed around, and anyone can can say something doesn't necessarily make it true. So how do you de how do you determine what's real and what's not? For me, it's like, is there any evidence to support it? Like, is there any pictures? Is there any video documentation of the of these kinds of sightings? Because there's different. There was I don't know what the show was, but there was a show where they they were talking about stories that that seemed supernatural, like this beast that had weird that would had a weird um animal characteristics um attacked this it attacked this family apparently and this person took pictures of its footprints when it was on on the roof hmm. and i don't know it could just be photoshop or something like we we have gotten far enough to like forge papers and um create fake ids so it's kind of hard to tell what's true and what's not anymore, but we have to, I think we have to be able to keep an open mind that these kinds of things are, they do exist. But the problem that I find with these kinds of stories is that there's not enough evidence to support this kind of thing. Like, I would love the idea of, uh, meeting alien life or meeting or meeting Sasquatch or something like that but there just isn't enough evidence to support these kinds of theories yeah well I was gonna say like also NASA said a few years back they found a planet that looks similar to our planet but it's completely, completely green it's not blue like ours because you know how you look up at earth right you see a lot of blue well it's blue and green yeah there's just more blue than green but they were saying like the planet was full like pretty much all green it's like another Earth. They found three different planets similar to ours. So it's an Earth with no water. Well, we don't know if there's any life forms on it or anything like that. We don't know yet. It could be aliens like... Earth. I wouldn't imagine that there would be life forms on there since yeah. any biological being needs water to survive. Hold it. It's just one of the basic needs that they took the, organism. They took the picture and the planet's just like, you know, how far away, right? We don't know until... And again, there could be... Like we're just seeing, you just we just saw like one side of this planet, right? Yeah. Not the whole. They didn't. Thing. Yeah. They, there maybe there's a giant pool of water behind the planet. We just were unlucky to see it. Yeah. That's a distinct possibility. It's pretty good though. They actually captured it from that far away. That planet's like millions of miles away. Like, can you imagine how far are we talking about? Wow. Well, I don't know. I can tell you the exact number, but it's crazy though how far it is. And they actually got a good picture of it. It's pretty clear. Yeah. See, that's progress, folks. Yeah. NASA's getting better with the, with the cameras, They're trying to find the best way to make it the clearest picture possible. You know, if it's like, at some point, as far as like space exploration goes, what I'm thinking is that we'll either get to the point where we're able to make like 
hyperdrive engines or something and be able to travel to these different planets, almost like Star Trek, to go where no man has gone before. Or aliens will will come to us and uh, help us connect to those um, to, the, to these different societies. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, the good way, not the bad way that they attack. Like, you know. Yeah, we, we don't want it to be... We don't want to live in a Halo universe. We've seen too many movies such as that. <laughs> yeah. I think, like... And another thing that... It's it's a good idea and it's a bad idea at the same time because and on space exploration, I mean, it's good because if we are able to make life, if we are able to make alien contact, then we be able to to share our resources. We'll all advance together. We all benefit from this. Yeah. But you know, there's there's a there be a lot of people who would despise aliens because of the way they look or how they're how they act outside of what we know is social customs and that could cause like um alien wars well pretty much like we look at them we look weird but to them they, we can look weird to them right like, yeah we the look thing. yeah you, you gotta put yourself in in other people's perspective to get a better understanding of them like they they just see you for the first time and they're and they don't know who you are they don't know why you're like this yeah. just as the same as you don't know why aliens are like whatever they are I, you don't know why one alien is like when why why one alien would look like um, a human with four arms or another alien that looks like Jar Jar Binks. That, that's a terrible idea. I wish I could do the voice, but I can't. I'm trying to do one, but he's not here. You're so counter through this voice. <laughs> this is me doing a good impression, by the way. But yeah, I feel like space exploration will be good because if we can establish a, a, a bond with, with alien life, we'll be able to share our resources like our expansion in evolution would literally be limitless but there would be people who who wouldn't like who wouldn't like these uh, other people just because they're different yeah it's a, it's exactly like um, the gay marriage uh, approval people don't like this idea because it's it's out of their social norm Exactly. It's a, it's essentially the same with this, with the idea of meeting, meeting life on other planets. You find something that doesn't, that just doesn't fit into your social customs. You automatically assume it's wrong. Like their things is wrong. Like whatever is outside of what you find moral and what's the word I'm looking for? Um, awkward. I don't know if that's the word I'd use. If it does happen, if we do make contact with life on these people, this is the best advice I can give, is to be able to keep an open mind. They wouldn't know much about us as much as we wouldn't know about them. We have to be able to, to trust that we can establish a firm relationship with these people and make that our social custom. Just like how we have to make a strong uh, change in understanding that gay marriage across the United States is going to be a social custom. Yes, it will. I hope people get out of the past and look forward to change in the future. Yeah. I'll, I'm real. I really hope that we can we can meet life soon before I die. Yeah. So that way I can say I'm friends with an alien. Well, it's 2015 now, you know, hopefully in 2020 or 2030. 20XX. Yeah. <laughs> Time would be so weird in space, though. It'd be like Star Trek, where it's like, what, what are some of the dates? Star, star date 2469 or something. Time on Earth is very different throughout various different places. Yeah. Time in space would constantly be constantly be different. There would be thousands of different times throughout space. Depending on where you are in the solar system, time would be completely different. 
But time uh, could also be manipulated essentially in space. At least that's what it I'm could, under yes. understanding. Like it would just it would be like Interstellar where we can warp time, we can we can use our knowledge of time to to take the time we need to be on this planet and and um, well, get back on before anything any major time change. Or do you remember in Interstellar where they went on, on the planet with water and they have the, the tidal wave and they have to get yeah, out there? It was one hour one to them, yeah. but to the guy that was on the ship, it was seven years. Time is not relevant to these hasn't is not the same as different times. And that's that's what I think would also be another big issue, like trying to establish these times, or maybe the uh, the alien colonies have already established the time, and we just gotta keep up with them. Yeah. Ooh. But either way, when we do make alien contact, and we do have an establishing relationship, we'll be able to make so many more advancements, even more advanced than what we what we have here now, and that's. That's probably the best we can expect out of out of our society, human society, and, and maybe there, maybe aliens would think the same thing. Maybe there's an alien colony with two aliens having their own podcast, saying this exact thing. It's like Inception in a way, but like yeah. it's not. No, it's not Inception. No, it's like. Inception, no, Inception, Inception wise would be people talking in a podcast about a podcast, or like having a podcast within a podcast. <laughs> no, that's like, that's like perspective in a way where it's like, there's, there's aliens having these kinds of discussions. They, these are the aliens that want to see the best in their society as much as we would like to see the best in our society. And you know what? In 20-something years, or 50-something years, or however long it takes, I believe we can get there. We can. And if not, then, well, we'll... Hey, at least we'll have some uh, non-killable meat in the future. <laughs> Anyways, I think we're... Uh, out of time on this video. Yeah, it, I, I think we've, I think we got, we've made a good uh, podcast this time around. Yeah. We talked more in our last video too. It's crazy. Yeah, it's we. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I think we're gonna end the uh, podcast here. This is, this has been good. This has been good. This is our, this is our second podcast, and we're, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yes. I feel like we've made some. We've covered some pretty, pretty interesting topics. Important, interesting. Yeah, and and we're just gonna keep talking about this kind of stuff in the future. And I hope you guys can debate in the comments what you think. Uh, like, leave your opinions in what we've discussed uh, in these podcasts because you guys are essentially the common debaters. We're all. This is our common debate. It's not just limited to the two of us. It's it's also your common debate. We want to give you guys that freedom to to debate in the comments. And I think it's uh, the comments are a good place to debate when there are when there's less trolls. It's interesting. You no know, one person says something bad. Everyone hates on them. One person says something good. Everyone likes them. Yeah. It's like that. Even if it's even if it's some way profound, there's always going to be a troll. Just making light out of something, and people are gonna get a knee jerk reaction about it. Yes. But anyway, that is it for this episode of This Is Our Common Discussion. Subscribe if you enjoy our videos, like if you want more, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm Tom Leo. And I'm Zach. And we are signing off. Bye -bye. See you later. See you guys.
That was awesome. awesome. That down was a good damn high five.